Down here I have another lead sheet and we're going to use some different um, progressions. Now some of these you may like, some of them you may not. Some of them are going to touch on things we've already done and some of them aren't. Um, but we're going to go through some different treatments we can use in, to this song that are all functional. Now they're not all necessarily not dissonant. Um, you may not even say all of them are beautiful. But they're all things that functionally work, and we're gonna, so we're going to break the song really into four parts. The first four bars, we're going to do a treatment. We're looking here, okay? The first four bars, notice we're not using any minor sevenths. We're playing one major six seven, then two seven, six seven, two seven, five seven, one seven, six seven, two seven, five seven, and one seven. Remember that way back when we started this course, we said the six was normally minor, and the two was normally minor. We've intentionally made a major here. We've turned them into secondary dominants. Now, dominants resolve the same way the minor equivalents do. A minor six resolves down a fifth just like a major six does or a dominant six does. So we're not changing the, the way the chords work, but we're intentionally turning them from minor to major. Okay, and here's the way it would sound. Okay, so that's the first phrase. Um, again, we're playing just sub secondary dominance, sort of around the circle of fifths. Now, some of you may be wondering, okay, well, how do you play that? Um, how do you decide how to position those notes? Well, I go back to those voicing charts that I gave you earlier. For example, right here we have, we're playing a six chord, which is a B major chord, and we have a, we're playing a G. Well, G is the flat 13. I didn't say this was easy. But that's the flat 13. So what I do is I pull out the voicing where the melody note is the flat 13 on a dominant chord. And so I use that particular voicing right there. Um, and you can do that all the way through this chart. Basically, you look at the chord, look at the melody note, how it fits within that chord, and then use the right voicing. And by the way, there's multiple voicings. I gave you some earlier, but there's others that you can use as well. But anyway, that's the first phrase. Now, let's talk about the second phrase. The second phrase, we're going to move, um, starting here, we're going to move in a, in a line. We're going to move in steps, starting on one, we go to two, then three, then a minor four, six, and then back to three, then two, then five, one. So we're just moving in a line up and down, moving in steps up and down. It's a different sound. Here's how it would sound. I don't know about you, but I'm really, really in love with that chord, that minor 4-6. Here it is again. That sound right there, I just love that. Okay, now let's keep going. We're going to go to, let's see, this is the chorus starting right here. And um, let's break that down into two parts as well. So we're going to look just at these bars here, these next four bars. One minor four six again, three, then down a fifth to six seven, then two to five. Now again, that's one six, two, uh, three, let's see, no I'm sorry, one four, three, six, two, five, one. That's moving around the circle. Once you get to four, four resolves to three, then three to six, down a fifth, six to two, down a fifth, two to five down a fifth. Now I want you to notice this right here, okay? I know that's a little hard. This is a little bit difficult, but that is a flat two seven. That is a tritone substitution for the five. So this is a position, this is a place where I'm going to show you a tritone substitution and you can see if you like it. But that's the same, a flat two seven is the same as a sharp one seven. For a five seven, that's your tritone sub. The tritone sub for a five seven is either the sharp one seven or the flat 2-7, depending on which one you want to call it. Notice that we're just going to play with it. We're going to start on 5, go to the tritone sub, and then go back to 5, just to give you some colorful sounds. Okay, so here's how it would sound. Okay, so those are those four bars. Now this is a little bit complicated. 
Um, notice again, we're playing, by the way, I gotta show you something. I use the four six here, the minor four six, but there's a problem because I'm technically playing it right here, okay? While I still have a D as the melody note. The D is being held for a dotted quarter. So I'm gonna leave the melody note. This is something I do a lot. I don't know if I really should, but I do, I leave the D and come down here and just play something that will work. Okay, so I just play that chord, so I play. The problem is D doesn't work in that chord. Um, a D natural, a D flat would, but D, da, D natural doesn't. So I just sort of leave that melody out and come down here and just play the chord just to get it in there. Now, we get to the three chord, that's F sharp minor. Notice that the melody note is the 11th. Again, that's just going back to the voicing chart, and this is the voicing for that position. So I play that, let's see. Uh, let's see, I need to play right. There's that voicing, now we're gonna move on to the, the six, seven. There's a voicing for that, two, five. There's your tritone sub. Some of you are thinking, wow, that's uh, dissonant. I like those kind of sounds. You can decide if you like them or not. Here it is again. Right back to the five. Now, I want to point this out, what I'm doing here. I've talked about this as we've gone. I've said that in a lot of cases you can feel, um, when you have like a bar of a one chord, you can change it out for several chords that start on a one chord and end on a one chord. Now, that's what we're doing here. Instead of just hanging out on a one chord for the full bar, I'm playing one, six, seven, two, five. Now, again, that's around the circle, one, six, two, five and that leads directly to the one that starts this bar. See that? So I'm just playing a little chord progression that takes us right back to that one chord, okay? Um, here it is again. One, six, two, five, right back to the one, okay? That's probably the most complex harmony in this song, that phrase right there. Now, now let's look at the last four bars. The last four bars, we're going to play one, sharp one diminished, two, sharp two diminished, or flat three, I wrote it as a flat three diminished, three, again, that's that thing we've been doing a couple of times throughout this course where we play one, two, three, and then we insert those crack, crack chords, the diminished chords in the middle. One, sharp one diminished, two, sharp two diminished, three. And then we move on to four, and then we go to sharp four, and then we go to one over five. So your, your um, bass line is going just like this. It's going one, just like that. It's really neat how that works. It's a step, you're stepping up chromatically all the way from one to five. Um, and it'll sound really good. And then once I get to one over five, I just play two, five, one. Here's how it would sound. Okay, so you heard it, one, sharp one diminished, two, sharp two, sharp two diminished, three, four, sharp four diminished, one over five, two, five, one. Okay, so that's four different things you can do with harmony. Again, we took basic one, four, and five chords and we, we used four different unique um, chord strategies, remodulation, reharmonization strategies um, to, to just demonstrate sort of how you come up with a functional um, chord progression.